Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you with another adventure into history, but not a uh, not good news today. Uh, so we're actually here at the Mahone Ingram uh, Cemetery. This is the burial ground of the uh, enslaved and their descendants here. And the cemetery has actually been vandalized and damaged this morning. I'm standing here with Mr. Cecil Young, who has done an amazing job of documenting cemeteries in this area. He's actually created is it three books now, right? Two is done, the other one's Two's. He's working on the third book, um, recording cemeteries in different counties. We'll let you, uh, him tell you about what he's doing, and then we're going to look at the destruction in the cemetery. So, what have, what have you been doing uh, documenting cemetery-wise? It's documenting locations in each county, putting GPS coordinates, and we're giving a copy of the book to the local library of each county. And we started kind of messing around and toggled a little. Yeah. So we came out here this morning and found this. Yeah. So uh, at about 9 o'clock, uh, Mr. Cecil texted me and told me that he had come upon somebody in this cemetery cutting down cedar trees. Um, and that he fled when, when you came out here. Um, the guy took off, I guess, when you tried to talk to him. Uh, so uh, I headed out here. Um, and called the Talbot County Sheriff's Office. De Sheriff's deputies already been out here um, taking a report. And between the three of us, we're going to be looking after this and making sure um, that we try to uh, catch who's doing this and uh, stop them because they are destroying graves. And here are grave markers, and we'll show you that in just a minute. Um, right here, uh, this is a log that was a cedar tree that was in the cemetery. Um, and this one was left here, uh, I guess, when they took off when Cecil got here. And uh, we'll take a look in. You can actually see where they've been skidding logs out. But it gets much worse than just this log here. As we go in here, you see they've been dragging these logs out of the cemetery. Well, that's Scott. And over here you can see there's a cedar tree that's been dropped right there. Now here we've got grave markers. Now these are grave markers that are most likely graves of the enslaved here. Um, these are some, we're in the oldest part of the Mahone Ingram um, Enslaved and Descendant Cemetery right here. Uh, these are just field stone markers. Odds are these are graves of the enslaved or people who died very shortly after. The, uh, and there's these trees that they cut down are actually skidded through here, um, knocking over these fieldstone markers. I actually put this one back in the ground um, earlier when we were out here with the deputy sheriff. You can see that one has also been pushed over right here. Um, and this was a close call right here. And we've got three, three graves, and these look like children um, here. There's one, two and three right there but as we go further into the cemetery you can see the destruction that happened here um this tree was cut and this guy obviously doesn't really look like he knows what he's doing with the chainsaw either which is kind of surprising um so he's not he's just cutting and dropping these trees and in fact this tree is hung up in another tree making a widow maker and it's right over this MTA grave. Um, so, you know, this tree is going to fall at some point now that it's been cut. And if it falls, it will destroy that MTA grave, which, as we've talked about in previous videos, is a very special headstone. It's Mosaic Templars of America, uh, which was an organization founded by freed slaves after the Civil War to help um, the formerly enslaved and other African Americans in the late 1800s and the organization folded in the early 1900s but very important uh, headstone there that's now endangered from somebody's uh, destruction of this cemetery with this tree just left hanging but as we go further in here you can see if you look on the ground um, you can see all of the the debris where these trees have been cut up and keep in mind that as we're out here we are completely surrounded by graves right now. Of course, I showed you the three um, when we first came in here, but there are graves in every part of the cemetery. They're actually easier to see, of course, before this 
ground got covered up like this. But there's easily, you know, 300 plus burials in here once you start to count all of the graves. We are standing in the older section now that is mostly field stone. And if it's not field stone, then you can just see indentions. In fact, you can see a couple under where this was dropped right here. And then another old cedar tree that was dropped right here on top of graves. And uh, it looks like this guy's got a slabbing attachment. And is making slabs out of these these old cedar trees. Mr. Scott has joined us too out here. And the thing is, is Cecil interrupted this guy this morning basically, but this has been going on for a while because if we look over here, there's an old um, trail where someone has drug yeah. these cedar trees out. You can see the tree was cut right here. And another one was cut right there. And then this is obviously an old uh, cut right here. You can see the leaves have all died, whereas the new cuts they have in this morning are obviously still have green leaves. And this tree was just dropped on top of these graves right here. You can see the grave right there. And then there and dropped on this boxwood that was intentionally planted here um, in fact there's a grave under this boxwood but these cedar trees are very old these are a part of the cemetery uh, themselves they were intentionally planted here and once cedar trees get to a certain size they stop growing um, and these cedar trees are easily you know date back to the to the origins of the cemetery um, to the earliest days of the cemetery so to see them uh, they are monuments of themselves in the cemetery, so to see them destroyed here is uh, is really, really sick. You can see this has been, that's been cut so long that uh, it's actually started to give new shoots. So he's been, he's been working on this for a while. He's trying to get that uh, live edge wood. Yep. He's what he's going for the slabs. Yep. And, uh. He's a tree wrestler. Yeah. You know? That's right. Same thing as cattle wrestling, I guess. If you look at it, if you're, this your land that you, this is what your investment is in. Yeah. It's it's Stephen. Mm-hmm. That's the thing about it. And Scott just pointed out off camera, there's two graves right here that we can actually see just the indentions of that are under all of this tree mess. Here's one. Here's one. Field stolen right here. Field stone, probably under this tree, is the uh, other uh, other stone. Right That's some right there. So this this is a row right here. Yeah. I see one field stone. I don't see the headstone. Oh, there's well, there's another field stone out there. I don't know if this. Oh, sorry, Scott. Sorry, Scott. I didn't think it would roll that he had, easy. He had that propped up. Yeah, he did. He had it propped up on. The little piece right there yep and not see the other stone i didn't think that'd roll that easy sorry high scott high high. i almost ran scott over as long as you didn't get me that's all that matters yeah so you know this is a whole different type of um essentially you know it's not grave robbing where they're you know going and and digging up a a grave but it's you know we've seen graves that were dug up you know and someone attempted to rob stealing wrought iron fences and now stealing these uh, very old cedar trees and destroying the cemetery in the process this isn't somebody just coming in here trying to you know clean up a cemetery this is no. somebody you know destroying this place for a profit yeah and are they really getting that much out of it you know yeah i, I hope they I hope i hope they find out who this is because you know this office i, bet, I guarantee you this ain't the only place it's been yeah and you know the cedar trees do every time we're out and we see cedar trees in the middle of nowhere first thing we start doing is looking for graves that's right because the old time they planted cedar trees around their their grave sites and man these were again these were old trees yeah. you know throughout here that have you know you can see the size 
size of this tree, this has been growing out here for a very long time and was again it planted. Wasn't dead either. Yeah, it wasn't dead. It's planted yeah, they, intentionally. They died back slowly, but the thing is, how many times have we gone out and we've seen them, and there's a whole range of them, and they're all dead. Yeah. There's certain things over the years where there's freezes or diseases or, or uh, insects that have passed through the area that's killed off a lot of the cedar trees. But, uh, you know, this is the, not this side, but this side, this is where you'll still see it's still got growth and you can see in the, in the trunk there, these trees weren't dead. Yeah. You know, so, he hauled that whole thing out. And that's dumped. And that one wasn't that old. What I was trying to figure out is how he's, I mean, I guess he's got a long chain to drag these trees out of here. And a winch. Yeah. Because yeah, that's his drag track right there. Yeah, you can see the track where it was drug. It actually, we need to walk down this and see if there are any disturbed field stones like there were at the other one. Yeah, right there where that tree was. There's a there's a field stone. Yeah, here's where you, you start being able to see the amount of graves out here. If I don't get got by those briars, there's a field stone. Field stone. Field stone. Field stone. Field stone. And then over there as well. It's interesting that these... What was that? Oh yeah, this cemetery, it keeps going that way. It's interesting to note too, just uh, for the sake of noting this while we're out here, these graves are kind of faced in different directions. Uh, you know, graves are typically faced, uh, facing east, um, headstone faces east. So we can uh, kind of get an idea of how they were interred in the ground. Um, and we know that this was, aside from the fact that this is just a taller field stone, um, we know that this would be the headstone and that the footstone. But over here, if you see, these are kind of, these are, are straight like this, and we go over here, and these are kind of at more of a different angle. It's kind of interesting to see the change there. Again, these are children here. I'll show you these also unmarked graves over here that have created very deep indentions in the ground right there. Hopefully you'll be able to see that on video. And then another very deep indention right there. So this is what we're looking at, and absolutely, you know, this is sickening um, to see this, uh, you know, just wanton destruction of a cemetery, um, carelessly dragging through here. I mean, you can see where this tree was drugged through here and got caught on this headstone, skinned the tree there, and of course dislodged these over here. Um, so just, you know, destruction of a cemetery without care. Um, this is an African-American cemetery um, of burial ground of the uh, enslaved and their descendants. And I've often talked about the fact that these uh, enslaved burial grounds are some of the most endangered in uh, around of all the abandoned cemeteries that we see because of the limited markings that are on a lot of these graves where we just got field stones and indentions. And to have somebody come in here and potentially destroy what we can visibly see um, is just terrible. And again, these, these trees serve as markers out here as well. So, you know, it's terrible. And, it, you know, it's this is against the law. Someone has broken the law out here. Georgia state law does protect cemeteries. But if nobody is actively going out there and checking on these cemeteries and being the guardian of these places, then you know that we're not um the, the the law won't be able to protect them unless somebody is checking on them it's been down for a while looking at the head of it he you know, cut a chunk out of that tree and that one at your feet too. yeah, yeah. That one fell. Yeah, it was 
nature did that. Yeah. But there's a grave marker right there. They fell on. Grave there too. The little lilies all over the place here. Yeah. Yeah, this is a considerable size. It just walked around. Oh yeah, it goes all the way, all the way down there. Yeah. It's a huge cemetery. Wow. The cemetery started with the uh, Mahone and Ingram enslaved people here right and then their descendants continued burying here up until i think around the 60s okay you got a nice boxwood growing right here too yeah yeah and that's an that's an old tree right there old plant I'm sure this one will be on his list soon. Yeah. It's still alive. Got plenty of growth in it. See the base, they look dead. Yeah. But look up there, you see all the, it's still lots of life in this. And this has got a long life. Yes. And these are, these are big trees in here because the cemetery has never been cut. Um, you know, it was probably cleared off for the most part when it began. Uh, and these cedars were planted here intentionally. Yeah. We've got these big oak, trees big oak trees in here. And you just look up and see how massive they are because they've never, this is a second growth forest. You know, it's not old growth, no. um, but it's a second growth. And so it was just allowed. The age of it too. Exactly. And that it's never been cut until somebody came in here and started harvesting. Yeah. More big boxwoods over here. And then we're getting into a more of a modern era of the burials here. Uh, this is still early to mid 1900s, but you can see the change from where we're field stones over there where the destruction happened in the oldest part where the enslaved individuals are buried to a more modern era where we've actually got headstones. And fenced off. Here. Yeah, and fenced off little plots. There's a slab right there. Yeah, there's a slab there. There's another one there. And then over there it's funny too because a lot of times people ask why we you know uh don't clean off these cemeteries that sort of thing um the other robert and i actually cleaned off both of these slabs um and it wasn't that a you know it wasn't that long ago they've already gotten covered back over that looks like it's Oh, that's foam. Okay. I thought, I thought that was a piece of rock. I was like, that's been dug up. And there's a little boxwood forest right here. Oh, there's a uh, military grave. Isaac Carter, Georgia. Private Company A. 316 Servants Battalion. Quartermaster Corps. World War I. He was born August 31st, 1892. He died June 24th, 1955. It's amazing how shiny that stone is still yeah. too. Yeah. There's another one right there. Another uh, headstone of some sort. There's a family plot right there. Yeah. Well, see, so I want to thank you again for uh, messaging me about this this morning so we, we got the uh, Talbot County Sheriff's Department on this and we're also going to keep an eye on it um, again if it wasn't for people like Cecil who are documenting these places um, and looking after them you know this this destruction would have gone unchecked Rufus Neal there's also a stone there with his name on it. Oh, really? Like a headstone and a footstone, but his name's on both? Yeah. Huh. Sure enough. Now this one, someone painted that one. That's a big pine right there. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's graves all around us here, too. You see indentions. Yeah. 
the on out through here. Now that mound built in here, that's probably from the construction of the road that's pushing, because the road's right there. Yeah. Pushing dirt back up in here over time. And this is pretty much the end of the cemetery over there. Um, we just walked through the whole thing, but. It is, it is huge. And you know, we've, there, again, there's easily 300 graves in here. Once you start seeing how tightly uh, buried these individuals are with all of the rows. Did you see inside of that one? That one's got some neat uh, concrete bases in it that thankfully no one's taken. And there's three graves right here, at least. There's one, two, and you see an indention for a third and a fourth. Again, this is this is what it's like when you start walking through a cemetery and you see, you know, okay, I saw three graves here. One, two, and three. But there's, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and then five, and then field stones over beyond that. It's amazing how many burials are in a place like this. All right, everybody. I hope you have, um, I guess, enjoyed seeing this video. Not, not a good, not a good happy exploration today. Um, destruction of this of cemeteries. You know, I, I keep saying I find it hard to believe, or it, it's it's not hard to believe, but it's um, that this is this is happening in 2023. Yeah. You know that this this old cemetery in 2023 is being destroyed. Um, we've seen previous destructions before that happened, you know, 50 years ago, but to see something that just happened today is um, terrible. And it's not an accident. It's not, you know, um, it's not even a timber company accidentally didn't see the cemetery. Uh, this is somebody that has come through here um, with the intention of stealing trees, stealing uh, cedar trees and uh, destroying graves in the process. And again, big shout out to Cecil. Um, I'm really glad you came out here today um and saw this because you know um maybe now you know between everybody again the, the sheriff's department has been notified uh, we had a deputy out here mr scott went and talked to the sheriff um and uh, maybe now we can uh help prevent this and uh, maybe bring bring justice to uh to these people who are buried here and had their you know sacred ground uh destroyed here today um, so we will see you next time.